Hey, what's going on guys? I'm going to talk to you today about how BLM has betrayed their black Cuban brothers and I'm going to talk about this. Okay, Black Lives Matter has basically said before, viva Fidel and have praised Fidel Castro. And the reason that they say they do this is because um, the Cuban government had given asylum to Asada Shakur and they had sent soldiers in there uh, in Mozambique to fight against the colonial Portuguese government and the and 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 fighting against South Africa in the uh, border war or the Bush War. Now there that is only on the surface, and that was just Cuba was just trying to impose their communist ideology on other countries. They didn't care about the black Africans in Africa. Let me show what they do. Let me tell you what they do. Their own black people in Cuba. Okay, and that's the reason why a lot of black Cubans are protesting against the Cuban government. Cuba is 11% black, and this communist government has affected all Cubans negatively, and it's not done anything for the Cuban people, and that includes black Cubans. But let me tell you what else the Cuban government under Castro and then also under Diaz Canal has done to um, black Cubans specifically. You go to the tourist industry, and the tourist industry, there are almost no black Cubans working in the tourist industry, never mind that the and the tourist industry is the cash cow of Cuba. Never mind that the that Cuba is 11% black. All white-skinned people are typically tourist employees. All, excuse me, all tourist employees are almost all white-skinned Cubans. Also, there are 25 main generals in Cuba's army, 25 head generals. Well, there's only one black general out of 25. That's 4%, never mind that Cuba is 11% black. Also, 80% of Cuba's, Cuba's college professors are white and if a black person, a Cuban, a, a white Cuban, and a biracial Cuban are all walking on the street together talking, the police is m more than likely to ask for the black person's ID or pass first. Black people are more are like five to ten times more likely to be stopped by police in a traffic stop in Cuba. And the, I mean, this is what's going on. And when black Cubans get arrested and go to jail, typically, and bl black Cubans have testified to freedom collection in the United States on this, when black Cubans go to jail, the um, the Cuban prison guards will send dogs in there to torture the black Cuban prisoners. And that's what Spaniards did when, Sp when Spain owned the island of Cuba and had slaves. And when they called the slaves or they would send the dogs to chase after the runaway slaves. And the Cuban police, if they arrest a black Cuban, they'll call them Black King Kong and a bunch of other racial stuff. So Black Lives Matter needs to do their homework of what goes on. And apparently black Cubans' lives don't matter to um, BLM. And BLM has basically blamed the embargo for the situation in Cuba, and that is not true. The, the, the United States... I mean, sorry, Cuba, the United, you, Americans can deal with small businesses in Cuba that are not owned by the government. But Cuba, the Cuban government doesn't allow those private-owned small businesses. Also, the reason that Trump, and to a certain degree Obama as well, stopped American tourists from visiting Cuba and staying the night in the hotels is because the uh, those hotels are partially owned by the Cuban military, and the Cuban military was spying on just regular tourists. That has nothing to do, that is what happened. So it's not the embargo. The UK, Canada, Ireland, and Spain combine, or you combine those countries and France as well, who, who do business in Cuba, they're wealthier than the United States. Why is Cuba still poor if all these other Western countries are doing business in Cuba? Doesn't make sense. We haven't affected our relations with these other countries just because these other countries do business in Cuba and the US doesn't. So anyways, I've always doing want to take care. God bless and bye. Bye-bye.